Talk with Yaz on Class 95's Love Songs. In the studio, we've got comedian, Singapore's best-known cross-dressing performer, actually. Funny man, Kuma. Yes. Hello. Hello, you put it so nicely. Why, really? It's a fact, one. Yeah, I know, but you, you said it so nicely. You know? Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so you were saying earlier on that um, when you first decided to do what you do, you know, cross-dress, yeah. do comedy work and everything, perform, mm-hmm. um, you actually fell out with your parents because they're a very conservative Indian family yeah. for about seven years. Yes. But you guys are okay now. We're fine. My dad passed away last year, so... But that's not the reason you're fine, right? No. <laughs> How did you actually mend the fences? I, I, mean... did, I did not do anything. I just let it rest. Because, you know, sometimes you don't push it. They will come to terms. And patience is a virtue. Right. You know, because you just have to let your parents understand on their own that um, you are not doing anything that's against your morals. Or, or you're not doing it to hurt them. Yeah. You're doing it just to earn a living. It's just out of the norm. Really out of the norm. Because every parent wants their son or daughter to be a government body or you know and work a lawyer a doctor whatever I'm just doing totally the opposite so I just let it rest because you can't change their mindset right you know because I think those days they have already programmed a mind a a set that they don't change it so you don't try and change it because when you try and change it it becomes worse so just let it be and after seven years my dad came and talked to me so if he didn't come to talk to you would you have I don't know reached out to try to try to make them understand I I, I, I tried because I came home I stayed with them and I took care of them and bought them the house you know and you can't just buy a house if you don't have CPF so I think my dad understood that actually I I have a job Right. You know, and I'm not just selling my body. And all that, you know, you do it other, other other ways. You know, you give them money. I mean, it's it's not buying them over, but it's just showing them that you care. And after listening to the song by Christina Aguilera called Hurt, the song is about if you have problems with anybody, dad, mom, whoever, it's good to vent it, say sorry, because when they're gone, it's too late. Okay, they, And you true. regret for the rest of your life. So I took care of my dad when his last few months, I went, I, I, I visit every week and make sure he's all right. And I think I've done my part. Did you guys ever talk about it again? You know, those dark years when... My dad has come up come up to me once and he said, you know, you're going to be alone for the rest of your life. This is his way of understanding. So you should have some savings and make sure you're well taken off. When they say you're going to be alone for the rest of your life, that means they understand what you are. going to, what you are. In a way, he's looking he's looking out for you and as well, as well, you know? Yeah, he is. He is indirectly. So you have to understand that's the way they... They, they tell you that, okay, yeah, la, yeah. I understand, I, uh, I support yeah, you. Yeah. I was shocked that my dad understands more than my mom because my mom was still hoping that I would get married. Even till today? Or is she giving up the whole thing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for people, let's say, who fall out with their parents for whatever various reasons, yes. you would tell them to, to try to mend their fences, but to wait for them, for the parents to come to terms. It depends on the family background, depends on what race and what how they think, you know, because nowadays parents are a bit more open because everybody's sophisticated and well-traveled, so, and they know the internet and all that. Those days, we didn't have, even have a phone and phone. So, it was different. But now, with all this, I think it's a bit more acceptable. And I think pa- if you have a problem with your parents, meant it because it is very important and don't hurt them. Right. So, it's just different, different people, different, different thinking. And some people are still very, very conservative. Right. You know, because I've seen people come to my show and I see the expression on their face sometimes, you know, when the jokes are a bit more over the top. I just the expression on the face, like, oh my God, you know, but it's humor. So it's human is like that. When you get uncomfortable, you laugh. Right. So Does it ever get your goat though when, when you see a reaction like that? Does it get, make you angry or does it make you even more like, yo, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you on stage, dude. No, I, w- I, would, <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would, I would actually tell them that it's time that, you know, you should learn to laugh at yourself and everything else that's happening around us because Singapore is moving so fast. We've moved so that's fast. That's true. Yeah, and if you're not moving with the government, you're left behind, mm. you know, and you're going to be just stuck there. Not even with the government, with the world. Yeah, just the world alone, yeah. And I think you really have to take one step forward and try and open up, you know, because no point you're just sitting there and hoping that we oh, thinking that we are all still this, this, this. We're not. We have moved on. We're many things now. We're huh? many things now, yeah. I all mean, right. Yeah. Well, coming up, we're going to chat more with Kuma. In fact, I'm very curious how you sort of get the inspiration or the material for your shows. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Trade secrets. <laughs> Stay tuned. Pillow Talk with Yaz on Class 95's Love Songs. In the studio, we've got funny man Kuma. Let me know. So, you know, before we get into where you get material from your show, because I'm really, really curious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I've always heard people say that comedians aren't always as funny or happy most of the time. In fact, comedians are quite depressed when you meet them in real life. They're quite like somber, serious people. Do you think that applies to you? Um, yeah, I'm actually very... I'm not depressed. I don't have to be depressed. That's why when you see a clown in, in any picture, there's right. always a tear dropping down. 
That's true, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people think that's just art. No, it's because that is a sad story, and we all we all wear a mask in any 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 kind of profession. You know, if if you're not happy with work, you wear a mask to pretend to be happy. And as comedians, all of us have got a very sad story. And um, why is that? Do you think is comedy like? Um... It's an escape. It's it's a major escape. And when we're on stage, we're the happiest. Okay. You know. It is not that we are all depressed and we we have committed suicide. suicide. Uh, no, it's not like that. It's just that, personally, I feel that I had a very bad childhood, and to get out of it, and eventually I was dancing and all that. Dancing made me feel really, really good because it made me happy. And stand up comedy went into another le- level where I see other people smile when I didn't. Do you know? Right. And it makes you feel really good. Like if you have hundred people in the audience and you make ten people smile for the day, you're really good. People have come up to me and said, "You know, I just divorced and I was so depressed, and the only thing I could do is come and watch you, and it made me feel better." You know, and it's, it's really, very fulfilling. Yeah, and just one person to say that, you're like, "Oh my God, okay, this this makes you go on." But you doesn't know? the flip side is when nobody smiles and nobody laughs? Doesn't that even, you know, your emotions are riding on other people's emotions? Isn't that kind of scary? Also, it is. It is. But if they don't love me, they're stupid, lah. Because. <laughs> You you like stupid lah, yeah, yeah, little ass on your head. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I should I should think about that more often. Ah, stupid yeah. I don't laugh. Go watch Glee. <laughs> I have actually. I quite love it. <laughs> not you know. I'm telling the people. Oh, okay, okay. Do you think also because um comedians always talk about you know life? Yeah. Therefore, you are in a sense more sensitive to the nuances of people, and therefore more sensitive to the more negative emotions and negative yes, energy yes. We, as well. Yes, yes. We we take all the negative emotions to make it positive because you know nowadays when I do more stand up, I do a lot of issues. You know about people, and mm-hmm. and there is a message. So a lot of people who are smarter get it. Right. There is a message. It's not just about ha ha ha. You leave thinking that oh my god, okay, I came for an answer and I got it. Right. So it's like you're a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you get all this material? Do you sit down? Does somebody write it for you? Because I know some comedians actually have script writers yeah, for I them. I don't. I don't because I I observe. I'm very I'm very observant. So when I see someone wherever in the street behaving funnily or looking funnily, and I, and I, and I write about <coughs> I write around it. And like fashion, you know, there's fashion you can go on forever. That's true. But there, there are a lot of people who dress very badly nowadays. Because I they, think a lot better <coughs> already in Singapore, you know. I mean, better, but yet I I've seen people who just wake up in the morning and they go and they just wear and go to the office and then after that when they have to go for dinner they're like, oh my God, what am I wearing? You know? And <laughs> I personally feel grooming is very very important. You have to look good. I mean, it's not about looking good for others, but looking good for yourself. Because when you dress well, you feel good, you know. That's true. But you know what? The effort to dress well yeah. is. <laughs> It's very tiring. I know, I know. But because if you are if you if you are a Leo like me, yes. you are vain. That's true. <laughs> that I was I, I will agree with you. Yes. Yes, and a lot of people are vain, but a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't have the money." I mean, it's not about you could wear this fashion, and still look nice. Right. It's about effort, actually. It's about effort. Yeah. Yes. And don't wear things that that you see in the magazine and say, "Oh my God, Naomi is wearing that." Naomi Campbell, and I think I look good in it, and it just doesn't go. Where what where what are you comfortable with? Short of t-shirt and shorts. Yeah, and you must carry it well, lah. Okay. Coming up, since we're talking about fashion, yeah, the fashion faux pas that you see Singaporeans sort of making that you're like, "Oh my God!" So let hopefully you can be a mirror now. Yes. <laughs> so that people can be more aware. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned for more Pillow Talk with Yaz on Class 95's Love Songs.